these days we study the history uh, with the research focus on medieval Japan. And I'm also the uh, director of the East Asian Studies Program here at Princeton University. Uh, the program functioned as an umbrella linking various departments and centers uh, concerning the study of East Asia, and it also helps promote, promote events like this one that we're having here today. Uh, it is my greatest honor uh, to introduce Yumi, one of Japan's most prolific and influential authors, playwrights, and essays. And you can see on the desk there that whole pile of books are, 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 are some of her uh, bloom and words. Uh, Yusan is known for her rich and soul-wrenching words that delve into the most pressing and existential issues of our time, such as colonialism, alienation, migration, poverty, family, ethnicity, citizenship, gender, and death and dying. Still, despite her writing about great challenges and struggles people face, her words always help us find a way to generate a sense of hope in the world. Yumi is a citizen of South Korea, born in Tsuchiura, Ibaraki, Japan, in 1968. She grew up in Yokohama and currently lives in Odaka Ward, Minami Soma, Fukushima, with her son and partner, where she runs a multi-purpose establishment of cafe, bookstore, and theater. Uh, and my note here also says I must add that she is an enthusiastic fan of rock and roll. So, uh, 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 Yusan's uh, career as a novelist began in 1994 after she was first a stage actor and then a founder, director, and playwright for Seishun Go Her 1996 novel, Full House, also the name of the cafe and bookstore she opened in Minami Soma in 2018, won multiple prizes. In 1997, she became a nationally acclaimed author with her Akutagawa Prize winning novel, Kazoku Cinema. As we know, the Akutagawa Prize is Japan's most prestigious literary award. Since then, she has published over 20 novels and many other writings, plays, and essays. Yusan is not only a well known author in East Asia, but in 2020, the English translation of her 2014 book, Tokyo Ueno Station, by Morgan Giles won the National Book Award for Translated Literature in the U.S. In 2022, Yusan received the Berkeley Japan Prize, which in the past was awarded to notable individuals like Yuichi Sakamoto, Hayao Miyazaki, and Haruki Murakami. While her career seems smooth and bright, Yusan has encountered many difficulties and at times actively fought to dismantle existing and enduring structures of inequalities in ethnic, gender, and racial discrimination in Japan and beyond. Despite these countless hardships, Yusan has worked as an advocate, activist, and leader of minoritized and traumatized groups to help those in need find their own space and place in the world. Let me share from you a word from one of her 2020 essay books, Minami Soma Medley, that to me eloquently captures Yusan's essence as a writer. While witnessing Minami Soma residents suffering from typhoon and then torrential rain, she writes, it is when we are faced with our own and other sorrow and misfortune that words are finally tested in their role as voice. Today, we are incredibly privileged to learn directly from Yu Yi San about her 2004 novel, The End of August, published in English this year. For those of you who have not yet read, the novel's protagonist was modeled after her marathon runner and grandfather, who vividly describes the injustice, indignity, and hardships that he, his family, and many other Korean people suffered during and after the Japanese occupation of Korea. But at the same time, this challenging family story of colonialism, violence, and migration has opened up Yusan's new life in the Minami Soma and her ongoing collaborations and coexistence with the nuclear accident victims, which we can learn more from another English translated book, Tokyo Uno Station. Tokyo Ueno Station was developed through and shared by Yusan's sustained interactions with the evacuees of residents of Minami Soma and the surrounding area through the local radio, radio Hibari FM's program, Futari to Hitori, or 2 to 1. The program began in March 2012 and continued through March 2018. During those six years, Yusan interviewed over 600 individuals in 297 episodes. Although the two books appear unrelated, Yusan showed them how stories that grasp people's, people's souls resonate across different times, spaces, ethnicities, 
and identities as each navigates through struggles in search of hope. But you today, you being a will be joined by two of our professors, Professor Asko Ueda and Yo Morimoto. They will each bring their unique perspective to facilitate our conversation with you, Sam. Asko Ueda is Professor of East Asian Studies. She specializes in modern Japanese literature. Her research interests include literary historiography of laws in Japan, linguistic reforms of Meiji major, major Japan, and the production of a national language, post-war literary criticism, and its relationship to war responsibility. Ryo Morimoto is an assistant professor of anthropology and affiliate of EAS. He recently published his first ethnographic monograph, Nuclear Ghost, Atomic Livelihoods in Fukushima's Gray Zone, which is based on his long-term field work in Minami Soma, Fukushima, between 2013 and 2019. He is currently exploring research and development of disaster robotics in the region and has gotten hold of a very, very exciting robot himself. So anyway. Um, now, before we begin, I want to briefly explain the organization of today's event. So we'll start with you, Sam, reading a few segments at the end of August in Japanese, and the capable simultaneous translator, Tara Mukola, is also one of them here, so, um, uh, will translate. So thank you, Tara Sam, in advance um, for, for your support. Um, and then after that, Professor Ueda Morimoto will invite you, Sam, to talk about her works regarding in life, and that will be followed by questions um, with from the audience. Now, after the event, uh, Yusan has generously agreed to do a book signing for us. Uh, the program will be giving out a limited number of books, um, and uh, there, we have some copies of both, Tokyo Wayo Station and the end of August. Um, and so we would have a couple requests. Uh, one is, if you would like a book, there's obviously not enough books for the people here. So only one book per person, and we would like to privilege first undergraduates, then graduates, and then then the faculty, who, you know, um, what they do, and so on. Um, and what, how this would work is, after the, after the event is ended, you would walk down, okay, um, in an orderly and convivial manner, okay? <laughs> then you can go over and pick out, if it's still there, one copy of the book, no fighting, people who jostle, fight, or cause fisticuffs will not be allowed to get a book, okay? Um, and so, and then you can pick the book and come, just come over here then, and then you read some will, will sign the book, okay? So that's, that's how that will work. Um, so anyways, uh, now finally I would just like to thank the uh, Japan Foundation New York office, um, the East Asia Space Program, um, and particularly Richard Chafee and Jenny Liu. Um, and also I'd like to thank the uh, Global Japan Lab, and the uh, Modern Winters has done a lot of help, Jim Ramo, um, and also the, um, uh, the Humanities Council for making this event possible. Final thanks to, uh, in, in particular, to Professor Gil Morimoto, who has really taken on the line share preparation and has been a crucial person for making all of this happen. So thank you very much. Uh, now, please join me in welcoming Yumi San. Um, and Yu San, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, it's nice to meet all of you. My name is Yumiri. Um, I come here from um, Minami Soma, uh, which is about 16 kilometers um, from the nuclear accident area. And um, so I run a cafe and bookstore there, uh, as was mentioned. で、これから動くするのですが、私は本になった自分の本っていうのは、え、読み返さないことにするんです。あ、そう、I'm <笑> え、この作品は 20年前に書いた本なんですけれども、
こうやって皆さんの前で朗読することによって20年前に書いた自分の文章と出会うという体験を作ります
私を支え励ましてくれます息子夫妻には「お母さんそろそろ仕事を辞めてのんびりなさいよ」と言われますが目の黒いうちは仕事を続けるつもりでございます4人の孫と15人の総孫はみんなこの手で取り上げましたし数えたことはございませんがおそらく2000人以上のよそ様が赤ちゃんを取り上げたと思います悪くない人生だったと思いますもう思い残すことはございませんがその時が来るまではなすべきことをなします主人は子供みたいに課題性のない人でしたからそろそろ待ちくたびれているに違いありませんおいお前いつまで待たせるんだ早く支度をしなさいって心の中で一息ついて稲森喜和は紬の格子島をそっとなで手のひらをももの上で開いた朝鮮語に訳してもらうと意味がこぼれてしまうことが多いしうまく訳してもらったとしてもきっと理解してはもらえない私が爆破事件を起こす朝鮮人を理解できないのに6年前に密用警察署に爆弾を投げ込み芝居組になった男は当然の報いを受けたと思っているこの人たちはあの男を英雄のようにあがめた時にいくらこの人たちから説明されても私は卑劣な爆弾で日本人を駆逐しようと企んでいる上海卑劣団の志を理解することはできないだろうその爆弾で私の息子や孫や相馬の血が流されるかもしれないからこの人たちは卑劣団員をかくまっているというよりこの人たちの夫や息子が卑劣団員になった日本人はこの地に存在しているだけで朝鮮人を傷つけているのだと言われれば口をつ,むつぐむしかないけれど理解し合,し合えなければ殺し合うという考え方は間違っていない理解し合うことはできない私たちに私たちの立場があるようにこの人たちにはこの人たちの立場があって私たちもこの人たちも自分の立場から離れるわけにはいかない私は朝鮮人にはなれないしこの人たちは日本人にはなれないんだ。理解し合うことはできないということだけを理解して、顔を合わせても目は合わせないようにするしかないのかもしれない。でも、私は三馬、三区と目を合わせないわけにはいかない。ここ何年かは、日本人よりも朝鮮人の赤ちゃんを取り上げることの方が多くなった。朝鮮人の女たちの間で、何歳の時は、イルボンサラムの稲森に限ると評判になっているらしい。嬉しいことだ。朝鮮人のお宅では、赤ちゃんの最初の誕生日の祝いの席に、参加を招いて丁寧にもてなすしきたりがあるそうだが、こうやって、この手で取り上げた赤ちゃんが、立って歩く姿を目にできるのは、無情の喜びだ。In the m o r i t i w a sat Japanese style and listened to the commotion of the Korean language, her eyes fixed as if she were staring at a faraway sea. If she asked the boy sitting next to her, would likely translate for her, but she could pick up a few words, and if she watched the people's expressions, she could generally understand what they were talking about. When she found herself a guest in a Korean home like this, she once again realized that she was in a foreign land. To these people, Japanese were outsiders. She felt that she wanted to explain that she was an outsider, but perhaps not quite in the way they might think, but she didn't know where to begin. I was born in Tokyo, in Ikenohata near Ueno. My mother and father were born and raised in Ikenohata. The man I married when I was 20 was born there too. 
My husband's family had for three generations run a ceramics store, and until my only son started elementary school, I helped out with the family business. But we were just barely managing. So I got a midwifery license and started working. My son had heard that if he moved here, he could get land for free, and that rice and resources were abundant. So he took his wife and children and crossed over to the peninsula. The more we heard about their life here from letters and postcards he sent, the more my husband got the notion to do the same, even selling off our house, the land that sat on and all our possessions. The day we set sail from Shimonoseki on the Satsuma Maru was more now more than 20 years ago. My son's eldest daughter was 16 then, so she remembered life in Ike no Haka clearly, but their son, who wasn't yet three at the time, remembers nothing. His eldest and second daughters had arranged marriages and have their own families here now. The youngest daughter was married last spring and soon will be in the last month of pregnancy. My great-grandchildren's birthplace is here. Kakokudo in what they call Miriam, but we call Mitsuyo, Keisho Nando on the Chosen Peninsula. And to them, Ike no Hata, where I was born and raised, is a foreign land they've never visited. The woods of Ueno and Shinobazu Pond and Toshu Shrine and Yanaka Cemetery appear to me in my dreams. Often I lose my breath and feel my heart tremble. I don't know how many times I've thought that I wanted to go home, but I've never once truly thought I'd do it. The Satsuma Maru lifted anchor, and in that second, I refused all thought of a place to return. My husband died five years ago, and he is entombed in the shrine in Kakohukudo. We Japanese built the railways, the public offices, the police stations, the banks, the schools, and the shrines. Each of the resignations and resolutions we've made to live and die on this land have piled up one by one, and we have built our town. I worked hard not to eradicate my smile. Neither my husband nor my son nor myself whined or grumbled. To get used to the fact that I will never fully be able to get used to this place, I left myself not a single moment of spare time for regret or complaint or resentment. What happened happened. You can't make it so that it didn't. You can only face things head on and try to do what should be done. And if you do what needs doing, then you can be proud. Pride is what pushes me on. My son and his wife keep telling me, Mother, you should retire soon and have some time to yourself. But as long as my eyes are still black, I shall keep working. My four grandchildren and 15 great-grandchildren were all delivered by my hands, and I haven't counted, but I believe I've delivered more than 2,000 children to strangers. I think that's not a bad life. I no longer have anything to regret, and when my time comes, I will do what must be done. My husband had, was a childishly impatient man, so I'm certain that he will soon be getting tired of waiting for me. Hey, what are you doing? How long are you going to make me wait? Hurry up, get your affairs in order. Letting down a mental sigh, Ina Monikiwa gently felt the flat pattern of the pony as she spread her palm against her thigh. If I get the boy to translate the Korean for me, so much meaning will be lost in translation. And if, even if he translates well, I shan't be able to understand, just like I shall never understand these Koreans who bomb offices. The man who had thrown bombs into the New York police station six years ago and got hanged for it was given a just punishment, I think. But these people revere him as if he were a hero. However much they might try to explain it to me, I shall never be able to comprehend the goals of the Shanghai Heroic Corps, who conspired to drive out the Japanese people with their despicable bombs. Those bombs might shed the blood of my son, or my grandchildren, or my great-grandchildren. These people are harboring the heroic poor. No, these people's own husbands and sons are the heroic poor. If one says that the existence of Japanese people on this land is an injury to the Korean people, I have no choice but to keep my mouth closed. But the very idea that we don't understand each other, we shall kill each other, is to me mistaken. We cannot understand each other. We have our position, just as these people have their own. And neither we nor they can take places. We cannot become Korean, and these people cannot become Japanese. 
Perhaps in understanding only that we cannot understand each other, there is nothing for us but to avoid each other's gazes even when we meet. But I cannot not meet the eyes of a woman in labor. In the last few years, I've delivered more Korean babies than Japanese. Among Korean women, I've been told, I've achieved fame. For a difficult labor, you must get the Ilbon Saram midwife, Inamori. This delights me. In Korean households, they appear to have a tradition of inviting the midwife to join the celebration for the baby, baby's first birthday and showing them hospitality. Seeing a boy I have delivered with my own hand, standing and walking, is a joy without compare. So that actually made me take on 
even more than my own history already, you know, that I'm already carrying from my history. Mm. So this um, Japanese um, midwife actually existed. あの、それで、え、後半になってもう一度出てくるんですけども、あの、日本が、え、戦争に負けて朝鮮から引き上げるときに、この3番の、え、ひ孫の、え、男性は朝鮮に残るという選択をする。So, it's like we appears um a boy decides to stay in Korea. と、35年の中で、え、生まれて、え、育ったミリアンという場所が、え、自分の故郷であると。ま、日本は、よその国であるから、自分のことを生きていくという選択をするという方向に出てきます。So this um great grandfather occurs only knew Miriam and um, that was his uh, place of birth and he didn't know anything about the town so he makes the choice その、あの、お孫さんの実在だったんですよ。And so one of the reasons that um, she chose this passage to be is that even though um, you know, there were many conflicts after the Japanese left and, um, and uh, many people died, um, we don't really know what happened to this great grandson, um, but even so, we really wanted to bring in their perspectives and voices into the novel. <laughs> and that's why I chose this. Hi. Uh, so now, uh, I'm going to ask a question. This is a question that I'm sure uh, your son has been asked many, many times. But I want to pose this question for the English speaking audience to, to, to show how uh, common and uncommon this day and the August is in her entire world. Um, to, towards the, the beginning of her literary career, uh, you sound very rightly refused to be ghettoized by her identity as a Zainichi University Korean writer. The media very specifically always trying to ask a Zainichi writer to thematize very similar themes and their plight with uh, the, the, um, the Japanese um, and the legacy of colonialism. But she had this wonderful fuck you attitude and said, no way, I'm not doing that. I want to write what I want to write. And I, I so very much admire that attitude. And then, um, basically about 10 years after she began her career, she wrote uh, The End of August. And so my question to, to you, Min-san, is, is what Change. So why did it? Uh, did you take up after about ten years of your writing? Finally, the the the, um, the issue of Japanese colonialism and and the legacy of your identity.あの私が書くことを仕事に選んだのは十八歳の時です。So I chose to become a writer at the age of eighteen.え今え五十五歳なのでもうすぐもうじき四十年に。今、私は、え、この8月の果ての、え、話、私のマラソンランナーだった、え、祖父を登場人物に、長編小説を書きたいと思ったのは、え、18歳の時からそう思っています。
とあと作家としての力量が必要,必要だというふうに思っています。But um, to do that, I knew it would take um, a lot of preparation and just、um, feeling like I was ready to do it. そしてこれを書いたのが、えー、2003年2002年から2003年にかけてですね私が3032とか33とかそれぐらいの年だったと。だから、なんて言うんでしょうね、えー、なぜ覚悟が必要だったかというと、えー、その時代というのが、えー、日本と、えー、韓国、朝鮮半島では、あのいわゆるまあ歴史認識が大きく異なるあの時代というのが、あの一つ、ちょっとハードルが高いなというふうに思いました。So one of the そして、えー、発表の場を、えー、ハードルが高い内容なのですが発表の場を、えー、さらにハードルが高い媒体をあえて選びました。それが、えー、日本の朝日新聞と韓国の東亜日報の同,同時連載という方法を選んだんです。それをあの書きながら、えー、本として閉じないで物語を、えー、新聞の中だからどれくらいですかね原稿用紙400字詰め原稿用紙3枚弱ぐらいの原稿用紙。
そ,のそれがなかなかその編集部、うんまあ、読者含めて、えー、反応が、えー、かなり膨大に送られてきて、大変だったということもありますし、えー、そのあとも朝鮮戦争の時代に、えー、共産主義者の権利をかけられた。私の祖父の弟が、えー、皇帝でランナーだったんですけれども、皇帝で、えー、走っているときに、足を打たれて、えー、連行されて、行方不明になって、おそらく殺されたという、うん、書いているんですけれども、これが、まあえー、と朝鮮、うん、における暗黒史というか、歩道連盟事件という事件があって。えー、その反応も、えー、韓国においてかなり激しいものがありました。というのがまだ、えー、か朝鮮半島は、えー、戦争が終わったわけではなくて、えー、休戦しているだけの状態でこの南北の対立は、えー、かなりまだ来ているからです。Um, for this book, as she was having it published in, in Korea and Japan from the Japanese side、uh, because of that section about、um, the comfort women、um, that has not been recognized by a lot of people in Japan.、Um, and then in、um, Korea, where she wrote about、uh, her grandfather's brother, who was also a marathon runner, and gets um, shot uh, and um, killed at the end、um, and was probably. Um, because of his、um, communist leanings,、um, was、um, really、um, killed by,、um, in that period. And the, the、um, Korean government doesn't want to recognize that. So she got back after her side. So, in the past, the Shinbun Yenshan was a very good thing. So, actually, my,、um, my regular Writing in both newspapers、uh, was、uh, stopped at a certain point. So, I want to ask that question.、Um, so, this is related to where it says this question about your identity as a Zainichi writer. And I want to ask you a question about the significance of names in the end of focus, which I feel is a big theme of the novel. And many of your protagonists have more than one name, Japanese and Korean, and addressing people in one way or another is critical and at times transformative. So, what does one's name mean to you? And how does having multiple names speak to the struggles among the Zainichi people? あの名前というのは、えー、一番小さな物語だと思っています。So I believe that names are the shortest、um, stories、うん。あの代々、えー、引き継いでいる苗字のと、私の場合ユウという山の木の苗字の苗字と、あとリーという。
、えー、書いた長い物語が8月の果てということになるわけです。So, I use my name
をいくつも書いて郵便局の窓口に出てそしたら郵便局の窓口の人がこれではあなたの母親に言われるんですよ。<笑><笑>でもその時に、えー、郵便局の窓口の方に歴史的なことを説明することができなかったのでその15歳の時の私は窓口を吐き出してしまいました。So, そういうあの、まあ、外務次韓国人というふうに呼ばれている人たちはその名前について、えー、かなり、えー、傷を負っている、うん、生まれながらにして深れを負っているというふうに思います。ですからその名前の物語であるというのと同時に、えー、名,前に名前が負った、えー、痛み、傷の物語であるとも言えると思います。So, well, これはですね、えー、翻訳者の、えー、文化財の文化財を選んだんです。Yeah. So it wasn't even chosen,、um, it was the translator, Morgan Giles, who was reading it. I was really surprised because, from my point of view, there's the typical most difficult books I've written. Hmm. She comes from a lot of, eh, to, 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 to,
、えー、日本語だけでは訳しないというふうに気づいて、えー、韓国語を勉強で訳しちまったから、ちょっとあの彼女の情熱は驚異的だった。<笑>
those different levels in the um, orthography of the book. Um, but it's also the complexity of her own household and her bringing to have all those languages Japanese 
で合わせられているの戦争の激化で、えー、中止になってしまった東京オリンピックに出場を有力視されていたのですが、えー、オリンピックが中止になってしまったために出られなくなっても。So even though、uh, he was already、uh, prepared to be part of the Olympics, the 1940 Olympics,、um, because of the war, that was canceled, so he wasn't able to go. So, the war was canceled, and 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 the war was canceled. So, even though he、uh, lost his most beloved younger brother、uh, who was killed and ready,、um, he still had、uh, freedom of that. So, he was born in the United States, and he was born in the United States. And even when he、uh, had to、uh, go to Japan and escape、uh, from Korea,、uh, And、um, basically, hide, <laughs>、um, he still found that place. <laughs> and continued to run. So, in this book, the book is written in the first page. So, in the first page, the book is written in the first page. でも人の一生というのは息で始まって息で終わる。Mm-hmm. Like, um, and, and the, the あの用水の中に、まあ、生命が誕生して。えーつまり母親が産んだ時に親が息を吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。吐き出す。
まあ、そのなんていうの伝わっているということに、えー、言語をいろいろな言語になっているので、なんていうのその確信の部分が伝わっているということに驚いています。まあそれは各国の翻訳ただ言語を置き換えるのではなくてその私が、えー、言葉にするときに、えー、先立ってそのイメージとか感情がある言葉にならないその部分に、えー、触れてその部分から組み出して翻訳にしていくるからだと思います。
最初に、えー、お二人が座って、えー、私の質問というのはお二人が最初に出会ったのはいつどこでですかそうすると、えー、その東日本大震災原発事故の前の暮らしを聞くことができるんですね自然な形で。So that made it possible just naturally、uh, for me to hear about their lives before the、uh, nuclear accident. <laughs> 生活の中にあるのかなというふうに伝わりました。当時、震災を、例えば頑張ろうという言葉であったり。えー、負けない、福島は負けない、うんえー、言葉であったりとか、あちこちに競合のように語られていました。So right えー、共に暮らし、共に苦しむことが大事なのではないかなと思いました。Really uh, それで、えー、あと話を聞いているうちに、私は当時、神奈川県で鎌倉市という場所に住んでいたんですが、いわゆる安全圏に私が。生活が置いているということが心苦しくなってきます。So as I was doing these interviews, I was living in Kamakura、um, in Kanagawa Prefecture, which is a safe part of Japan. And so as I kept seeing, meeting with these people、uh, who were suffering, it became harder and harder for me、uh, personally. So that was the reason I was. Thank、you 
you know that that is a part of the process as well, but not just shy away from that to go forth and, and learn. <laughs> Thank you all so much for that um, wonderful uh, uh, discussion. Now we're going to open it up to questions. And just please raise your hand. We'll try to recognize you. Um, and so my only request um, is because we have until about 6 20. So just one question. And please keep it short. <laughs> yes. Okay, hello, Ben. Um, yes, thank you. Choose one. Okay. Yeah. One. One. Okay, so let's see. There is no freedom, remember? So <laughs> I have to choose the best one, okay? Please. And uh, so as we say in Japanese proverbs, you could understand better. Japanese, you know, you guys are so keen on it. And Genji no, a very small, if you like, sign on it. Now, so much, you know, I'm not going to be a human and grow this in it. それで、さんのまだ、あの、何やってきましたか。それで、ユーザーは、あの、あの、全部の方法を、どうやって直さなかったっていうのを言わせても、それを主に、あの、なんていうか、力を得たんですね。それを簡単に、こう、説明していただけ
犬の子姿を見てもう家の中に物を取る,取るのはやめようあのその犬のために、えー、何一つ家の中のものは取らずに帰ろうというふうに言ってその犬の埋葬だけしてその家の物を取るのはあのしなかったというふうに語っていました。So she explained that she went there, she's a woman in her 70s, and went there with her son. And when she saw the dogs like that, she couldn't bring herself to take anything from the house. Um, so she just focused the time on burying the dogs. Um, so you have a shiba. And then um, um, there were several stories like that in the dream. <laughs> Hi, um, thank you so much for your talk. This is a translation question, actually. In uh, Tokyo in the station, there are sections written in Romanji, and I just wonder about this kind of in between that's neither really Japanese nor English. Why not translate those sections into English or leave them in you know, the mix of Hiragana Kanji, whatever was appropriate? I mean, why, why leave those sections in Romanji specifically? えー、だから何て言うんだろうその私
はその他人の痛みを知れというのは痛みを痛めというのはあの難しいのではないかなと思います。けれども、他人の痛みを痛めないことを痛むということはできる。こ<笑><笑>れは自分の痛みを自分のものにできないことが痛むということはできる。So, そこもあの悲しみというか痛みでがある種その理解につながる道筋になるのではないかなと考えています。ありあなたの痛みを私が痛むことができないなら痛い。So that I can't feel your pain itself is a source of pain. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
、えー、JR に乗っていく公園にも、8月の場所でも、悲しみについての物語だったり。<笑> Thank you very much. And、um, uh, my father, a Korean who was born during the Japanese occupation phase, entire life he was educated in Japanese. He was 18 when Korea was liberated. And he spoke much better Japanese. And he, I think, understood more Japanese culture than Korean culture.、Um, I don't know how he felt about the Japanese and Japan、um, in his life, but I just wanted to ask you since you、um, definitely chose to keep your Korean citizenship,、um, and I understand that you don't speak that much Korean, but you still feel Koreanness in you. And I just was curious、um, what, you, what your Koreanness consists of besides the language. Because a lot of us here are from other cultures, other countries.、Um, I'm a first gen, and you are, I think, third gen、um, Zainichi. And I just want to know what constitutes.
それで私はあの、まあ、こういうふうに日本語でしゃべる日本語で書き日本語で思考をし日本語で夢を見るで今まで付き合った人も日本人で日本語で愛を語る息子を日本語で育てる日本語を教えるけれどもその日韓の歴史あ、まあ、北朝鮮も含めて朝鮮半島と日本の歴史が、えー、日本の,あの国家間がかなり契約の状態になると SNS なので、えー、帰るというふうに自分の国へ帰るというふうに言われるあるいは日本に対して、えー、いろいろ、まあ、批判的なことを書くと、えー、嫌いならば自分の国へ帰るというふうに言われて、まあ、突き飛ばされるみたいなという意味でいつもこの、えー国家に所属しているという意識は、えー、持てない。持てないけれども、えー、間に立っている、いわゆる橋ですね。橋の上に立っているから見える景色もあるのではないかなというふうに思います。<笑>あ、じゃあ、まあ、あ、なんだね。
保全や、えー、衣服が用意されて、まあ、最後、それを燃やすわけですけれども、あのー、お金もものすごくかかるんです。<笑><笑>一晩でじゃなくて、3日間眠らないで続くときもあるんです。でも、どこか小説の取材でありながら、えー、気持ちとしては、行方不明になった、うん、祖父の伝行性で多分殺害された、行方不明になったその祖父の弟がどこに埋まっていくのかというのが、えー死者が降りてきて、教えてくれるかもしれないという気持ちは少しあります。Thank you. Please let me know. 